guys and welcome to this edition of Hyclopedia. Yes, today I'm in the north of Singapore. As you can see, I'm near the causeway. And uh, today we are going to take a ride along the north coast. Um, now, I know you might be thinking, well, Singapore's north coast, it's not very interesting. And you're right, there's a lot of industrialization along the north coast, but there are one or two interesting places that you can check out. So uh, let's go and find them. scrubland behind me may look uninteresting but I've been told by a secret source that hidden deep inside there are some colonial era structures which are known locally as the Marceling Tunnels and I know for a fact that um, quite a few people have been exploring there recently and posting their adventures online and uh, I'm not going to do that, um, but you need to be aware, one, you might get into trouble, and two, you'll never know who you might bump into when you're down there, because um, a few years ago it was rumoured that Singapore's uh, most wanted fugitive, the terror suspect Mas Salamat, I think that was his name, was hiding down there before he managed to escape to Malaysia where he was caught of course but you know apparently he was hiding in the Marceling tunnels for a while so if you do decide to go down there and I don't recommend it then just be aware it might not only be geckos that you meet when you're down there uh, if there's any bird watchers amongst you uh, this spot behind me just these couple of trees behind me usually there's a a pair of nesting eagles up in the tree and they're pretty beautiful birds but usually there's a lot of bird watchers and photographers here taking pictures but this morning there's nobody here so I don't know whether they've flown away or whether they're taking a vacation or what but uh, if you're into birds then this is a good spot to come and check out some eagles Okay, this place is Calsa Crescent Prison, although I think it's an abandoned drug rehabilitation center. So I guess um, everybody must have been rehabilitated. Hey guys, if you notice that road behind me, there is a lot of waste trucks going in and out pretty much all day long. That's because that road leads to Sunoco, which is, I think it's Singapore's biggest power plant. It's also one of four waste to power facilities in Singapore, which basically means all your rubbish that you throw away goes to either Sunoco or one of three other places where it's burnt to provide energy and electricity. Singapore Island 
doesn't have landfills because you know you've got five and a half million people it's land scarce so you can't really afford to have a huge landfill but burning the rubbish for five and a half million people each day that rubbish doesn't just disappear it produces ash and so the ash needs to be dumped somewhere too so Singapore actually does have a landfill site it's just a purpose-built one on an island off the south coast now that island is known as Semakau Island and currently it's estimated to have enough space for the ash until 2035 I'm not sure what the government's gonna do after 2035 but knowing them they've probably got a plan The next stop on today's um, trip is um, Sembawang Shipyard. It used to be known as Sembawang Naval Base or Singapore Naval Base when it was first built. First announced in 1923, it wasn't actually completed until 1938. There are some clues in the architecture of the main gates behind me as they have kind of like an Art Deco feel. Now, the base was complete just in time for World War II and at the time it was considered the jewel in the crown of the British Empire in the Far East. In fact, Churchill himself referred to the base as the Gibraltar of the East. It didn't really help the war effort though, as the only two major ships sent to the region, the Repulse and the Prince of Wales, were sunk off the coast of Kuantan, Malaysia, just two days after leaving the harbour behind. On December the 10th, 1941. The base itself fell into Japanese hands just a few weeks later. Another really cool thing about this area around Sembawang Naval Base is that there are a couple of areas featuring lots and lots of these beautiful black and white houses. I mean it's kind of like you've been transported back into the colonial era. I guess the houses were built alongside the base so that the naval and uh, armed forces top brass had somewhere to stay. But um, yeah, I mean, if you look at the names of the streets, it's kind of like an A to Z of British colonial territories. And I guess it was kind of like the last hurrah as well, because shortly after the Second World War, the uh, empire started to break apart as all the uh, places started to get independence. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, some of these houses are in really good condition and others are a bit run down so I'm kind of wondering whether they're scheduled for demolition. I mean there's still people living in some of them and I guess they wouldn't want to move out so it be interesting to find out whether uh, eventually they're going to have to make way for more HDBs. All this time travel is making me a bit hungry. I think I'm going to go and grab some lunch. So the chicken is um, not fried as normal, it's cooked in like a curry rendang sauce. Really looking forward to this. It was around this time that the motor on the giant boom lift right opposite my seat started up. 
and although it made recording impossible, it didn't spoil my enjoyment of the delicious Nasi Limak or another successfully ordered Kopi C show dye. Fried battered bananas with um, cheese and chocolate on top. It may sound a bit strange, but it tastes great. And I'm going to wait till it looks really hot. Mm. Really, really good. There's a lot though. Uh, I think I'm gonna be eat, eating it all. Should have got a doggy bag or something. You got the, the sweetness of the banana, the crunchy batter, the kind of creaminess of the cheese, and the sweetness from the chocolate. It's really, really good combination. I don't, I don't come to this part of Singapore very often, but next time when I do, I'm definitely gonna come back here and get some of this. Now, you can't come to this part of Singapore without going for a hot spring. So, let's go. So I'm here at Sembawang Hot Springs and um, from experience I'd say the best time to come is during a weekday if you can and at lunchtime because it's probably about the quietest, quietest it will get but it's still pretty busy. Um, this place has been in existence or been known about for about a hundred years and it used to belong to a local landowner and uh, believe it or not, they used to bottle the water and sell it uh, to drink. And then after a while, the drinks company FNN, Fraser and Neve, bought out the local guy and they carried on selling the water as a kind of like a mineral tonic for many, many years. But now, as far as I know, people don't drink it. They just uh, come here to soak their feet and cook eggs. This place has been refurbished recently. I think it opened at the beginning of this year. And when it opened, see these racks? They used to have um, free wooden buckets and spoons that anybody could use to get, get some water and soak your feet. But I think they lasted about a week before they all disappeared, which was kind of surprising for me. I didn't think people would be into like such petty theft in Singapore, but anyway, if you want to come here and soak your feet, if you do it in the main area over there, then you usually have to wait in line. So the best thing to do is ta -da, bring your own bowl, and then you can. Uh, sorry, there's a army helicopter flying over there, over overhead, because we're right next to Sambu Sembawang Air Base. Um, yeah, as I was saying, it's best to bring your own bowl because then you don't have to wait around. <laughs> now, I made a bit of a schoolboy error earlier because it's the first time I'd ever bought a pot, a pan here to, to use, and I put it right under the hot water spring. And once it filled up, I couldn't get it out because I didn't want to put my hand in there and pull it out because it was too hot. Luckily somebody helped me and then I learned what you need to do. First you need to add the cold water which is over there. So you add some cold water first, then you take it over to the hot part, then you put as much hot in as you like to get it to your desired temperature. So uh, 
next time I bring my own pan, foot pan, I'll know. But uh, this uh, stone building behind me uh, houses the original spring that was built at the site many, many years ago. Okay guys, I'm done at the hot springs now. Had a nice soak, feeling refreshed and ready for the last leg of my journey, which is to go home. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you can't survive a Saturday morning without one of my videos, then please click the bell for notifications. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Take it easy, over and out.